editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine. I'm so glad to be with Pastor Jeff Johnson today, the, the senior pastor of Calvary Chapel Downey. What an awesome church. Pastor Jeff, it's so good to see you. So good to be with you. It's good to be with you, Tom, and to uh, talk about things that uh, would build us up as it as the church is going through it so much. And uh, we need to exhort one another, comfort one another, and uh, just share things. Uh, this is the greatest time we could be living in these last days. <laughs> it really is. Yeah. So while we're waiting for people to click on, I'm just going to mentioned that uh, Jeff was what Pastor Chuck Smith referred to as one of his mighty men, the young guys who received the Lord's vision early in the Jesus movement. And I, I think all you began in 1973 with Downey there, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. And five years later, you were able to move into a large facility, which was pretty amazing for that time. That was, I know, a miracle to all you. And then for, now it's 47, <laughs> I think 47 years later now, yeah, and with your lovely wife Karen, uh, that and you've had hundreds of it. That uh, you started with a couple hundred when you moved to the new facility, and now it's thousands of people are are part of your fellowship. And what an amazing thing! And all you do so many things. You know, uh, we've done stories on quite a few of them through the years. The House of Ruth Adoption Ministry. What an incredible ministry! I know your wife Karen spearheads that. And that has blessed so many people in the Calvary Chapel movement and outside as well, where they, it's an adoption ministry and, and, you, and you know that that child is going to a godly Christian home. And what, what a wonderful thing that all you've been doing there. And that, of course, you have the Sound Doctrine radio ministry and so many mission outreaches. The magazine covered Jeff first back in Russia back uh, 21 years ago. And We've had coverage of you in Israel, and, and we know you have a Christian school there on the grounds, preschool through 12th grade and a Bible college. And as a matter of fact, tomorrow on our website, calvarychapelmagazine.org, we're going to run a story on one of Jeff's pastors, Roger Stallhut, leading a group from Calvary Chapel Downey to minister in Kentucky as they came alongside of a small fellowship there. So I'm just going to take a second just to pray, and I'll ask Jeff to pray us out at the end, but let's pray before we lead out yes. here. So, Lord, we come before you. We uh, just ask you to fill us with your Holy Spirit. Lord, uh, this technology, Lord, we thank you for it, that I can talk to Jeff in California, and I'm here in Virginia. And, Lord, we just ask you to come alongside of all the, all the churches around the world that are facing difficulties. But as Pastor Jeff said, what an exciting time. And thank you that we're here for a time such as this. So we pray for our time together that you would anoint it and just bless it in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. And over the past several months, really two months, I've interviewed some Calvary Chapel pastors who got saved at Calvary Chapel Downey. And you raised them up there. The Lord raised them up at Downey and uh, Pastor Ed Taylor. Matter of fact, when I was with him at Downey, he even showed me the seat where he was sitting at, in your uh, sanctuary where he gave his life to the Lord. And uh, uh, D Pastor David Trujillo at Calvary Chapel South LA, or Sola, as they call it, and H Jose Hernandez at Hope Watts Calvary Chapel. Um, what a great young men that you've trained up there and then sent them out. I know at times they said, they all told me they wanted to stay uh, in the comfort of Calvary Chapel Downey, but the Lord, and I'm sure you probably gave them a little push yourself there to, to, to move them on. So, and just to tell everybody again, I'm Tom Price, editor of Calvary Chapel Magazine. And, and we ask you to like us on Facebook and follow us on Instagram. It's calvarychapelmagazine.org. On, on, on our online, we've been putting out fresh content every day, and we just sent the latest print magazine out, so all the churches should be getting them soon. Getting soon. So, um, Jeff, I, let me start out now with asking you, I, how did the COVID and night with the response? It was probably mid uh, March when it hit here, and I'm sure it was about the same for you. Uh, how did that begin? at Calvary Chapel Downey. And I know at first we didn't think it was going to be that severe and 
it surprised us all, I think. Yes, it, it just was like a tsunami. You know, it's that slow taking out and everybody's just wondering, what is this? What What's going to happen? And then all of a sudden you see it and it hits and it just shook everything all around the world. Everything started to shut down. Every business was shutting down. Mm -hmm. Every church was shutting down. I mean, it was horrific. And uh, it was um, it took everyone by surprise. And uh, yet the Lord is in control. He allows things to happen. And so we were looking to him. Uh, with uh, this pandemic, it's uh, it's killing people. It's serious. Mm -hmm. How do we deal with this? And the Lord uh, caused us to just go ahead and flow with everyone else that that they're shutting down. We wanted to be a a part of the healing of this thing, and we wanted to show that we we are we are eager to serve our our people and. And uh, all of a sudden, we found ourselves learning how to live stream like never before and do this Zoom stuff and uh, and try to connect with our people. I mean, there was nobody. We got a, a 3,500 seat sanctuary and we were we were out there just talking to nobody. And it was it was it was very interesting, <laughs> to say the least, right. but uh, that we did our best with it for two and a half months. Right. And uh, it just got it got old quick, right? And and we were praying and God and they kept giving us signs of it. It's going to be all right. It's next week. It's mm -hmm. and every, in fact, it was like every day something else would would come in the way. Uh, we uh, hear a number again, and uh, oh no, and this has happened. Oh we're, no, we're going to open, and no, we can't. And it went back and forth like forth like that. So many times it was truly frustrating. I know for everyone. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We want to apologize to the viewers as you're coming on. It looks like our voices and our what you can see from the uh, video is not synced up. So we just have to deal with that. So we apologize to the viewers. But just listen to the words that Pastor Jeff is uh, saying. It's just like listening to him on radio. So, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, and so now, Pastor Jeff, how did the Lord lead you through the early response back in the spring as, as far as, I, I, like you said, you kept getting diff hearing different things, but I know you were anxious. There was a hope that we could be back by Easter, but that didn't happen either. And yeah. uh, so just to kind of walk us through what, uh, what the progression was there for, for your church. Well, uh, not only uh, did we not have Easter, uh, for the first time, we were we've only been rained out on the stadium uh, one time, and we came to the church and had Easter. We've never missed Easter, so that was kind of interesting. Uh, everything shut down. Our kids had saved up because we take our child, our our senior class to Israel every year, and they save up four thousand dollars each to go to Israel. And this would be our 14th uh, year to go over, and that was totally shut down. And you can imagine uh, the kids' graduation was shut down. Well, and and the worst thing was the sh the church was shut down, mm, yes. and that I I just couldn't get my mind around that or my heart. I mean, there's something wrong with what is going on, and, and uh, we just uh, kept praying. Until all of a sudden, you know, you hear things. And I and I heard about, you know, the th May 31st, Pentecost Sunday. Right. And I heard that. And I knew there was a group of about 1,200 churches throughout California because Jack got them together and, and really got these guys excited about that. I wasn't really a part of that at the time, but it kept on weighing on me. That is incredible. We're talking about the celebration of Pentecost where the Holy Spirit was being poured out upon the church. I thought to myself, well, this is the time, if there was ever a time to open up the church and allow the Holy Spirit to come upon us and to bring us back together again, that this would never happen again. 
So uh, we just went for it. And uh, as we did, people were shocked. Uh, very few came at first, but then they started to come back. And of course, we everybody was concerned about distance. Everyone was concerned about masks. And we did everything that we were required to do. We had been, you know, just... Uh, just trying to do our best, and uh, we we did everything, right. uh, and yet um, they said no. Uh, you have to not be in your church. You can go outside. And they started uh, setting up different things that we could do. Now, if you're a large church, like we're a large church, but it doesn't even have to be a large church. Any church is not only uh, essential for. <laughs> Uh, the the welfare of mankind, <laughs> but it is trans uh, transcendent. I mean, we're talking about God said that He wants us to be together. God said, "I want you to get back into your church." And when God told me that, I I realized we should have never left, mm. and that was a shocker. Um, we were trying to be obedient, but we should have never left because there's so many things that it shut down. It shut down any kind of outreach to anybody. It shut down prayer times, being together, praying in the name of the Lord. It shut down. And then, and then they started even getting to the place of no singing, which is ridiculous. And uh, but we just we weren't trying to be hot dogs and hot shots and 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 go against anything. But we realized that we had four or five hundred people that by the courts were sent to our church on Tuesdays. It's called Second Chance. And they're going through the, the all kinds of different uh, um, classes for domestic violence, uh, for different things. And we, the whole church is, is uh, um, involved in it. I mean, we've got teachers, and some of them are really sentenced here for like 52 uh, weeks. Wow. And, um, and, and so there's necessary things. There are our, our ministry to the college, our ministry to the kids, and when that shut down, we know now the studies that they're coming up with. Everyone's discouraged. Everyone's depressed. The suicide rates are up. Everything is crazy. People's lives have been just ransacked. And it's, it's horrible. So we need to get back to church. And if there's anything I would say is, uh, guys, pray about it. If we could all just get on board with this, um, we're we're going to be back and doing our ministry. But if we go ahead and continue, it, this thing is there's no end to it. Right. And it looks like something else could happen. Something else could happen. So what are you going to do? Just sit there and try to reach them through Zoom? God mm -hmm. never meant it to be that way. He wants us to gather together. He wants us to be together, to lay hands on one another, to pray for one another. And we have been doing that now for, uh, let's see, May, June, July, and all of August. So here we are, three months. And man, we're seeing God pour out his spirit upon us. There is an excitement that we've never seen before. There is, there's healing taking place. There's there's ministries thriving. Everything's open at our church now. And yes, they are threatening to fine us, throw us in jail, whatever. Uh, but I just said, bring it. Uh, because listen, uh, I'm never going to shut this church down again. This is not going to happen ever again. And I've told him that. I've told everybody that. I had the uh, head of uh, L.A., um, city uh, council over here talking with me, can't you just work with us? And I explained everything. I, I explained that we can't put uh, thousands of people in a little tent outside in the blistering heat right. and have church. Uh, we can do it because God's given us a huge building and we can have church, we can have school, and we can do all the things that you've asked us to do. And and ministry will continue. They don't understand that. And mm -hmm. they just understand what they've been given by the government 
and 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 that is to just shut everything down. And uh, many of us, as uh, you know of uh, Jack uh, out in Chino Hills, uh, yeah. uh, we've got um, uh, what is it, MacArthur, John MacArthur. We've got Rob. Uh, oh, God speak. Yeah, and he's he's there's starting guys are starting to come aboard and see that we need to get back to church uh -huh. and they're getting threatened. But hey, chap, Acts chapter four, read that, read, go into that because they threatened them a number of times and uh, they just continue to say, we, we've got to obey God rather than man. When it comes to this situation, when you're telling us to shut down ministry, God's work in people's lives, mm -hmm. enough, yeah, enough, yeah. And it must be so frustrating, too, because the things that they're coming against you, you go to Walmart and you see the cars parked side by side. And I know they cited you for having cars parked two feet away. Yeah. And, and that have they were counting how many people walked in and then how many people walked out. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully the, the hopefully the, the numbers matched, walked in and walked out. But it's it's just. You know, you see all those people and then you see, you know, in Nevada, of course, they're allowing people to go to gambling facilities. Yes. Uh, and and it just doesn't make sense. So one uh, one question I have for you, Pastor Jeff, is um, how were you get? I mean, I, I know you were praying through all this and um, I, I think you were realizing that the mental health, like you had mentioned, of the people in the Downey area was really at risk with if if you had stayed stayed close it, it was it, it was really a uh a, a time where where you felt like you had to react and reopen i assume yeah well the the suicide rate is all time high really uh, people are yeah the people are are psychologically damaged mm. because of the things that are going on and i even think that the mask <laughs> the masks are incredibly not good either because you're breathing your own air and, and they're finding out that it can become dangerous to your respiratory system. I mean, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know when everything's gonna be lifted, but I know this, that um, as pastors of churches, um, we have uh, a responsibility. I never had the responsibility to shut my church down. Right. And I, I repented of that, okay? Uh, I, I should have never done it, but I did because I wanted to be a part of the the, the healing aspect of it. I sure everybody that shut down their churches that they had that heart right. because we have a heart for people. We 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 hate the, the this virus that's going down. It's real, okay. But there comes a time where enough's enough, and we need to get back together, praying together, becoming um, uh, the ministry that God's called us to be to one another. And not to be so scattered like the sheep. And I'm very concerned about people that are hunkering down still in their homes uh, or maybe just rebelling and getting out back into the world and, mm -hmm. and backsliding because mm -hmm. they're not doing something that God says in Acts 2.42, I want you to consistently, steadfastly do four things. Get, get into the word of God. Right. get into fellowship get into prayer and have communion and now we've been having communion but it's been through zoom and all that but no we need to come together we need to get together and uh, pray for one another pray for our governors pray for our city uh, managers and uh, that god would uh, do a work in their hearts showing right. them that we are more than essential that when we come back and open our doors, that's when healing begins. Exactly. What, when did you, and I, I, I hear your voice that it was you were trying to deal with the local authorities and balancing your desire to obey civil laws, because it says in Romans 13 to obey the civil laws, but yet you were hearing God's direction as your primary response, realizing that well, the pandemic was bad, but it wasn't like, I mean, I understand there are more people dying from suicide than there is from. Yeah. And, yeah so, but, you know, they, they right there in Acts chapter four, again, they they said, don't you preach in Jesus name. If you do, we're going to do this, this, this and that. 
And they said, they just answered back, listen, we ought to obey God rather than man. But wouldn't you do that? Uh, you'd yeah. obey God. And they kind of reasoned with him. But then yeah. later on in, in Acts chapter 5, it says we must obey God rather than man. So this is one of those situations where the law is one thing that, yes, we are obedient to the laws of the land. Yes, we obey all the laws of the land. But when it crosses over to God's law, there's right. where the difference lies. And right. there's where I, I have to thank um, and, and do a shout out to Bob Tyler. He's been the lawyer involved in all this stuff and, right. and really helping out and really praying and really understanding the numbers game in this and, and really trying to get out the truth of the true numbers of what's really happening and of the deception that is taking place. So, mm -hmm. you know, and they're saying, well, this has turned political. Oh, man, it, it's horrible. Right. And, and so when you look at it that way, it, it, it just it shows that the world definitely is involved um, and trying to shut down the church. I mean, literally, and doesn't appreciate the church and what we're doing. But we know better. We know in the end times there's going to be persecution. There's right. going to be threats. And so we have to stand up to those things. And that's what I'm praying for, is that the pastors would begin to stand up and uh, just see, let God speak to you. And once God speaks to you, you're, you're going to go for it. And, and you're going to do it because yes. we must obey the Lord rather than men when it comes to situations like this. Right. Uh, but would you explain, I, I think we were talking about before we went live, but can you explain to some of the listeners uh, and uh, the end times prophecies that you see lining up uh, now with how this is, how this has worked in through the church and in, in, in these days now? Yeah. yeah. Well, it, we knew, you know, this was coming because uh, one third of the scriptures is prophecy. And that is God says, Jesus said this that I will tell you things before they happen. So when they happen, you will believe in me. So prophecy has got a multitude of reasons why, but it's to warn us. It's to let us know that the days are getting shorter and that the coming of the Lord is near. I think you get into Matthew 24 and you just go right down right at the very first what are the signs, Lord? And he begins to show the signs, begins to tell of those things that are going to be happening in the end times. One of the things that's very interesting is he talks about pestilences and, right. and uh, earthquakes having in different places. All of nature is in an upheaval right now, groaning for the day of the Lord. And we see nature has never been this. It, they've no. never recorded these things happening. And then yeah. all of a sudden, look what's happening to California now. You know, all the fires and the, you know, we're we're always the shake and bake group over here. <laughs> Whether it's we're cooking in fires or we're shaking. But all these are signs and they're getting bigger and, and more prevalent throughout the world, which is incredible. And then I was looking at Matthew 24 verse 9 where it talks about and they're going to come against you and they're going to they're going to pull you into the courts they're going to they're going to begin to persecute you uh and uh th that's now starting to happen more than we have ever seen it and mm -hmm. we see the public cry the outcry of um just the how dark the days are and that's another one of those prophecies Isaiah says there's going to be gross darkness, the people. And I, I asked the, the congregation this last Sunday, do you think we're there to gross darkness? And everybody went, yeah, you know, <laughs> look, just watch what's happening all over these major cities. Yeah, and, okay. and it's out of control. So um, there is there is, you know, light at the end of the tunnel. But we don't know what God's going to do. We, we need to trust the Lord. We need to get God's people, the sheep that have been scattered, who have no shepherd, who are trying to watch a Zoom, and you really got to try to get anything out of it. It's tough. 
you yeah. know, it's tough to keep your attention. We need to come together and we need to hear the word of God. We need to be taught God's word verse by verse, chapter by chapter. So we are going to be definitely essential for these end times to let right. others know that it's going to get worse and <laughs> things are going to start happening that just like the Bible said, will take place and we right. need to remind them of those things All right Pat, i'll take a little break here just to say hi i'm tom price the editor of calvary chapel magazine we have the privilege today of speaking with pastor jeff johnson from calvary chapel downey uh, and it's it's so and uh, jeff is jeff is one of our leaders in calvary chapel he's one, on one of our board members and he was uh, started back with Pastor Chuck, sent out and uh, started, been there for 43 years. And it's amazing amount of young men that have come out of that uh, uh, and uh, that are in leadership now as pastors. And we were, we covered a team that you sent uh, a year and a half ago, I think, or maybe two years ago, down to Guatemala and did mm -hmm. a big story on that. And it's just amazing when, you, and you say, and I'm sure, Jeff, you at times you just must sit back and go like, wow god you just can't imagine what you've what god has done through calvary chapel downey i'm sure it's at times it really hits you that wow it's just incredible well throughout all the world we have 118 118 or something like that uh, uh calvaries that are strewn through all, all the world and we're growing constantly because right. there's new brothers and that are being lifted up. We have a whole group of here that are being trained to to go out and 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 to preach the gospel and to go back to their towns wherever they're from or wherever God sends them and to start a church. And uh, that's needed today more than ever, uh, yeah. especially uh, what Chuck has handed down to us, and that is how to properly teach the word where people can catch it, live it, experience it and watch it just grow in their lives and give them strength for today, hope for tomorrow, because tomorrow's looking dim for a whole lot of people. Yeah. And yet the Lord is saying, hey, look up, your redemption is drawing near. I'm right. coming very soon. And that's right. been the message since I've been a kid and right. coming into Calvary Chapel, uh, that the Lord's coming back at any moment. And I believe that from my heart, and now seeing these things take place, what is happening in the world, what God is doing with Israel, what God is doing throughout the world, uh, how God is putting it all together. And we are most to be uh, desired as far as living in these last days. We get to see all the culmination of everything coming together. And uh, so the church is um, excited. The church is blessed. The church has come back from the wilderness. And, <laughs> and man, you know, three months is a long time. It is. It can do a lot of damage. Yeah. And yet there's some now that are six months into this. Yeah. And so my whole heart, my whole prayer is that pastors will pray, really get, get on your face before the Lord and pray and ask God to speak to you and bring conviction to you and repentance if you, if it need be, but bring comfort to you so you can bring comfort to those that need comfort right now because so many are hurting. We have people coming from churches that, that are hurting so bad because their pastors have shut it down and it's still shut down. So there's a lot of people floating around now wondering what is going to happen. There's right. a lot of fear. Right. And so how do you deal with fear? Well, you come into his presence with praise and thanksgiving, and he mm -hmm. surrounds you with the comfort of the Holy Spirit. And he begins yes. to lift you up and place you on his promises. Do not be afraid. Fight right. for your brothers. Fight for your husbands, for your children, for your wives, for your homes. That's what it says in Nehemiah chapter four, verse 14, powerful verse. Right. We need to fight in these days, spiritually speaking, with yes. the weapons of our warfare, which mm. will not come against the church. There's no weapon that is formed that can, hey, the, though the gates of hell tries to come, you know, it's not gonna work. 
We, <laughs> we are here to see Jesus come to take his church out of here. And soon and very soon, there's going to be millions missing. You want to be one of those right. uh, of that group because you don't want to stay around for the next seven years. No, not at all. And, you know, Jeff, these days are dark. And I mean, you would hope that people with that aren't walking with the Lord would just realize the emptiness in their in their lives now and realize that Jesus is the only answer that yeah. given, given your life to Christ is the only way is the only hope. Yes. So, you know, I can see how the Lord is really using this to drive people to him. Yes. In this time. Um, and and you, you gave some great counsel there for uh, for people who are dealing with de depression or, and suicidal thoughts, which I, I don't know if there's ever been such a heightened time for the for depression and suicidal thoughts as there has been just over the last several months. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And we need our hope is in him. Our yeah. hope is all about Jesus and, and our eyes on him in these days. You right. say, well, how can I have eyes to see? Well, just ask the Lord to open your eyes, get into the book of John, start reading the gospel of John, and let mm -hmm. God speak to you. He will open your eyes. They might be blind now, and you might have no, no hope and, and, and be discouraged and depressed, but as soon as you get to uh, John chapter three, he's right. gonna speak to you. You must be born again. You must be born of your father, which is in heaven, spiritually ignited for him. I mean, he, he changes your heart. He, by his spirit, he comes in and ignites you for him. Mm. All of a sudden you have that peace that passes human understanding. Even in a pa pandemic like this, even in darkness, you see, and you see like never before, you, right. you, you're looking up, you, you, you've got God's attention. He's, he's got your prayers and right. he wants you to cast all of your cares upon him. But how can you do that unless you get to know him? So yes. he wants to get to know you. He wants to get to, he wants to love you. And that's what we're experiencing right now in this darkness, of what people are talking about. Uh, I know there's a whole lot of people d depressed and, and think that this is it, but no, this is not it. It is darkness that is causing the light to be seen. It's bringing a lot of people to their knees. It's waking people up. Sometimes we need a little shaking. And this definitely is more than a little shaking. It God's is. trying to get our attention yeah. that we need him in this world. Without him, there is no hope. No hope at all. Hey, we just tell everybody this is Tom Price from Calvary Chapel Magazine, and our website is calvarychapelmagazine.org. We were asked people to like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. We're putting out daily content. One thing that's happened since the pandemic started is we had four deadlines a year for the printed magazine. Now we have 365 deadlines plus four deadlines for the magazine a year. So this has really upped our game quite a bit. And just trying to tell the stories of different Calvary chapels, what they're doing in the midst of this, or, or even outside of the pandemic, or in some of the racial issues that have, have come up and how the Calvary chapels are, are ministering to others through this time. So it's been a quite a time for us as well uh, here on the East Coast. But we know that our, our West Coast brothers and sisters, our pastors, our Calvary chapel pastors, are, are really at the forefront of this fight. And what we've always noticed, Pastor Jeff, it starts out with all you and it comes east. It usually jumps the middle of the country to the east coast and washes like a wave back across the, the middle of our country. So what all you're dealing with is something that we'll probably be dealing with soon as well too. So thank you for all what you're doing there. And, uh, so any closing thoughts and, and kind of if, if you can just kind of share some of the things that all you've been told, all you were um, cited for or things that were just seemed like they're just kind of crazy stuff that they've been um, trying to um, discourage all you in a way. Yeah. Let me say this, Tom, uh, you and the magazine, which we have enjoyed over the years, that is tying all the Calvaries together 
sharing what is happening in the mission field, sharing what's happening in our own nation. I know articles are going to be coming out like crazy. There's so much uh, to be done uh, and to be shared, but it's been a blessing and we always love getting it. I would say if there is any pastor uh, watching this, that y- you need to get that magazine to your people because it'll encourage them. It's a it's a magazine of ministry. It's a magazine of of things that you can do. Uh, maybe you never thought about going to somewhere and sharing the gospel, but it it just really is an encourager. And I want to encourage you, Tom, to keep your eyes on him because he's using you guys in a powerful way. And I would say this: that I, I appreciate everybody's prayers because I'm not going anywhere. And I'm, I'm hanging here, I'm gonna stay here. And I hope that uh, many others jump aboard. Um, it is, it is kind of crazy when you get threatened. <laughs> Nobody likes to be threatened, but right. uh, listen, God is our protector. God is with us. Mm. Uh, you know, he, he's, no one can be against those that are serving the Lord. So continue to serve the Lord. Those of you that are not back in church, find a good church that's teaching the word. Get back into a steady feeding of God's word in your life. You you can't just go to Sunday meeting and survive. You got to get involved in a church. You've got to allow God's word to draw you, to empower you, to make you strong so you can overcome the evil one. The evil one is the lies, is the fake news. It's all the junk that's going on. Don't listen to what's being said on the television. Start looking to what God is saying, and you're going to be okay. We're opening our school this next Monday, and we're going for it. And they said, well, no, you can't do that. This is a hot area. Well, we're not hot here. No one's getting sick here. We're going to open our school. And and we're going to thank God for going before us. We're going to do everything they're asking for us to do to keep our kids and parents safe. But we're opening our school. Why? Because the kids need it. The parents are begging for it. And, And that's really what God would have is these kids need to start praying together, seeing their buddies, seeing their friends, being able to play together. Let's get back to way uh, that uh, let's get outside <laughs> it's it, it, you know i'm i'm just grieved over this whole thing it's it hurt so many so we're going to try to get back to um as much as we can uh to um life like it was but kicked up 10 notches why because we're never going to be the same right. god's changed us god's changed right. our hearts our vision has changed we're seeing things clearer than ever before and we're going to do things righteous. We're going to live righteous lives. We're going to serve the Lord and we're going to take our stand because God is going to get all the glory and he's coming for us soon. So let's do this. God bless you. Love you. Yeah. Pastor Jeff, I just want to thank you for spending the time with us, but also wanted to thank you for being a shepherd and a shepherd shepherd and, 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 a, and, and a shepherd of pastors and a leader in Calvary Chapel. We praise God for our leaders in Calvary Chapel uh, that have been, you know, have been uh, leading us through this and, and all the all the senior pastors. And it's, it's a great weight, I know, that you carry on your shoulders. And uh, so uh, we just ask people to pray for our leaders, to pray for our pastors, and for the, especially the guys in California there that are under this pressure and uh, in, in this fight. So uh, we would ask everyone to pray. Uh, before we close out, I just want to say once more, uh, uh, Tom Price from Calvary Chapel Magazine. I'm the editor here. We've had the privilege of talking to Pastor Jeff Johnson at Calvary Chapel Downey. And uh, before he prays us out, we will also say to uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, Go to our website uh, tomorrow, calvarychapelmagazine.org, to see the story coming out of Calvary Chapel Downey as Pastor Roger Stallhut took a group from Downey to uh, Kentucky to minister there. So it's always special for us to be able to uh, just to capture some of the ministry that goes on. So, uh, so uh, Pastor Jeff, would you thank you so much for taking the time for us? Would you pray us out? Yes. And and, and just just and and lead us. Uh, and how 
that we should uh, continue on. And thank you for your heart to be bold and brave through this time. Well, thank you for having this time together. Um, and Roger also took the kids and those that were this, with his team, about 30, uh, 30 uh, of them, to the ark. To talk about end times. They got to see the ark over there. And wow, if you haven't seen the ark, go see the ark. It's awesome. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your son. And Jesus, thank you for coming. Holy Spirit, thank you for being here with us to comfort us during this time. And that, Lord, you're with us. That is that is so much. We need to hear that often, that you live inside of us. You, you comfort us. Your yoke is easy. Your burden is light. It's not heavy to serve you. It's glorious. It's awesome. And so, Lord, bring the family back. Bless, God, your people. And fill us with your Holy Spirit and that power from on high that we can have an effect in our world today. That in the early chapter of uh, Acts, they all came together in one place. You poured out your spirit and Lord, you used them and many were filled. Many went into all the highways and byways of the world and shared the good news of Jesus Christ. Thank you for those that are uh, continuing on with the gospel. It's good news and uh, that many more can be saved before you come and take us home. So thank you for all that you're doing as we uh, place our lives and our families in your hands, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Jeff, so much. I really enjoyed talking to you. And just know that around the country, we're, we're, everyone is praying for all you there at Calvary Chapel Downey. Need it. Got it. Love it. <laughs> God bless you. God bless you.